Hello everyone, welcome to the first video in a year-long video series all about topics of relevance for post-secondary students. My name is Sam and I'm the Vice President External with the St. Mary's University Student Association as well as the Chair of Students Nova Scotia, which is a provincial advocacy group. This year is anything but normal and things are changing day by day, which is why it is so important to stay educated throughout the year. Today's video is a very special one. I am joined by Dr. Strang, the Chief Medical Officer of Health for Nova Scotia, who's here to talk to us about how to stay safe in the current post-secondary environment. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thanks, Samantha. Thanks for having me on, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this, and uh, I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, you know, so much of our COVID response is built around making sure people, no matter where they are across the province, what, what, what they're doing, have the right information so they can keep themselves and others. Uh, Absolutely. So first things first, I can imagine your life has been very hectic these past few, I think we're at five-ish five months now as restrictions, data, protocols are changing by the minute. But I'm wondering if you could take us through the current public health protocols and restrictions that are currently in place in Nova Scotia. What we currently uh, have in place, so I always talk about we have uh, what's required under the public health order. So there are certain things that need to be done uh, legally uh, under the public health order. And those are the requirements. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that really that aren't part of the order, but are all part of, uh, of what I call a package of personal preventive measures that we all need to be doing together to keep, keep each other safe. So certainly under the public health order, uh, we'll start with people coming into the province. So anybody coming in to Nova Scotia from outside of the Atlantic provinces, uh, with a very few exceptions, is required, uh, those individuals are required to, uh, to uh, self-isolate for 14 days before they can go out and about uh, kind of broadly in public. So, and the whole purpose of that is that, uh, and it's worked effectively in the Atlantic provinces, we have had low numbers of COVID and we're really trying to uh, uh, decrease the chance of COVID coming in into uh, Nova Scotia from uh, people from uh, another province. You know, some of our larger provinces have had much more COVID activity, or or bringing it in from another another country. So that that's the first thing is the understanding the requirement around uh, you know the self isolation for 14 days. And that really means that people need to come into the province, and they and I know for universities have really been big on this that. That, that students have had to have a, submit a plan ahead of time, uh, which is really important because uh, you need to be coming to the province and then have a place where you can stay um, uh, for 14 days without having to go out and get food, uh, you know, medications, all those essentials that we rely on. So either have those already provided or, or some arrangement that uh, you can purchase and have them delivered. Um, uh, people are, if they're isolating, are allowed to go out onto their property. So if you're, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have a little bit of a yard, you can do that or onto a balcony. Uh, I know that students are, are living in residence. They're having kind of monitored or supervised uh, outdoor time because, uh, you know, clearly having somebody just stay in their room for 14 days is not very healthy for them. But that, that quarantine requires a, a significant restriction uh, on activities. Um, the other parts, uh, the second piece of what's required under the public health order is, uh, is as much as possible maintaining physical distance. So that's six feet or two meters. It's, that's a critically important part because if we're six feet apart, we, we really can't transmit the virus that causes COVID-19 from one person to another. So wherever possible, uh, that that is uh, that's very, that's uh, an important public health measure, and it's actually required under the, under the public health order. Um, and then you unpackage that. There's a you know we are uh, while we're uh, the first thing is to maintain physical distance as much as possible. Under the public health order, people can uh, have groups of up to ten uh, for social activities that they don't have to maintain that 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 physical distance. But it's important to remember that those groups should be as should could be household groups, so people living in the same house, uh, or you know a group of friends. But it's really important that people understand that every group of ten that they add into uh, their social kind of mix, they're adding a. It's not just it, they're, they're adding 
another nine people and all the interactions those nine people have. So we really encourage people to, uh, in an ideal world, people would have a single group of 10 for their social activities. We understand that that's not re realistic for everybody, but certainly very careful about the number of groups of 10 or the number of situations where you're with uh, up to nine other people and not having physical distance. The next piece of which is in the order is in how do people beyond that number of 10, how do you get together and socialize? So we know that, uh, for instance, people going to a restaurant that you can have, um, you know, a group of 10 can decide we're all going to go out to dinner together. They can go and sit together at a restaurant. Um, but uh, for in, in, if it's just a regular, uh, a, a bigger, uh, say a family event, or, or um, uh, you know, not not organized by a by a, 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 a business or an organization, you can have up to fifty people can get together, but those fifty people have to be physically distanced. Uh, except you can have you know those groups of ten, those, those preformed groups of family groups or social groups can go to a larger gathering up to 50 each group of 10 up to 10 has to stay six feet apart from other groups of 10. so let's say you were one you know somebody wanted to host a backyard barbecue uh, or something so they could invite up to 50 people uh, multiple smaller groups within that but each of those groups would have to stay separate from each other and then if we have a larger gathering, say there's a, a wedding that a, a, a hotel is hosting or um, we're allowing it for, um, for you know, sporting events, you know, essentially we say that there, if there's a business or organization that can take on the responsibility and be accountable for meeting all the public health measures, then in indoor places like going to the theater, they can have uh, up to 50% of the of, of the normally allowed capacity. So let's let's uh, if there's a theater that normally has four can have 400 people by the fire marshal, they can have up to 200 people. And there's a maximum of 200 in an indoor event. If it's outdoors, it's 250 in an outdoor event. And again, the rules of you can have groups of up to 10. Each of those groups have to stay the physically distance from other groups that are within that overall 200 or 250 maximum. So starting with quarantine, then how people can socialize is, uh, carefully in groups of up to 10, while, you know, and the importance of maintaining distance, and then we can have larger gatherings, but under very controlled um, uh, manners, if you will. The other part that's required under the, health, under the public health order is uh, everybody in Nova Scotia, if you're in an indoor public place, uh, you need to wear a mask. Uh, if you have a valid medical reason for not wearing a mask, then um, you don't need to go get a medical certificate. What we're saying is that we, we're, you, you should have that valid reason taken at face value uh, and you need to be accommodated. So uh, let's say you have uh, a lot, you know, the, ma the main medical reasons are, are people with significant uh, anxiety disorder key reason. If somebody has that and they can't wear a mask, then, we, then they need to be allowed to be in a public place, indoor public place, without wearing a mask on. So we're really, we're not, we're really encouraging people to um, uh, uh, only, you know, only use the, the, you know, the reason of, of not wearing a, a, a medical reason for not wearing a medical mask, if that's really true and valid. Uh, because every time we don't wear a mask, we're putting others at risk. Uh, but at the same time, if somebody is not wearing a mask, we, we shouldn't be judging them. We have we should just accept that they that they have they they must have a, a valid reason for not wearing a mask. And that this has worked well so far. That the vast majority of people, when we made this mandatory back in the beginning of August, has there's been very good uptake on this. So you, somebody may ask, what is an indoor public place? So we're saying an indoor public place is anywhere indoors that the public has free and ready access and and that that you can expect to have members of the public there. So things like any shopping and indoor shopping environment, libraries, um, uh, uh, you know, restaurants, you have to do that. And, you know, a lot of businesses that serve the public, 
I know universities have all the Nova Scotia universities have adopted their own masking policies. It's very much mirror the, 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 the Nova Scotia policy, which is all of the indoor public places on university campuses, um, um, uh, lecture theaters and all those kind of places are student union buildings, libraries, masks are required as well. So that's what's required under the public health order. There's a number of other important pieces that aren't legally required, but they're very important that people understand. And if we do all of these things, this is what we do all do together to keep each other safe. So it's really important with COVID that one of the key things is if people may have be uh, sick with COVID and be able to spread it to others, it's really important that they're not out and about. So our general message is that if people are feeling unwell, that we now in Nova Scotia, we have an 811 online, either online or phone call. So we say if people are feeling unwell, they should either stay home or go home as quickly as possible. And then if you have internet access, which most people do, you do the 811, just Google 811 and do their online COVID assessment. And you'll get more direction about whether you should be tested and what, what you should do. If you don't somehow, for some reason, have internet, then you can call 811. So that's really important. And it's, it's just, hopefully it's pretty easy to understand. You're not feeling well, stay home or go home and do the 811, contact 811. Absolutely. Uh, the other piece is that, you know, how we gather and physical distancing I've talked about. But it's really important that uh, about, uh, you know, uh, good hand washing, uh, frequent hand washing. Because that's how often the virus is spread around. We get it under our hands and we spread it around uh, that way. Um, so that's why you'll see lots of places that before you and I, before you go into this building or go into this uh, business, whatever, wash your hands. And even if you're at home, you know, it's, lots of students live in you know, living environments. Uh, you know, good hand washing around. You know, frequently washing their hands. Uh, is really important. The other thing is what we call cough etiquette. If you're coughing and sneezing, doing it into your sleeve, not into your hands. Um, what that does is, if there's any virus that we're coughing or sneezing, it goes into our clothing and not out in, into the, under our hands, which then spreads it around. Um, and the other thing that and that a lot of universities are doing this, all businesses, you know, what we, we call you know regular or free, increasing the frequency with which they clean common surfaces, so doorknobs, railings, everything where lots of hands go. Um, it's important to uh, have those frequently cleaned with a disinfecting type cleaner. Uh, and on our, uh, on our coronavirus website, I'll talk more about that later, we have a list of what those may be. But it's important to use a disinfecting cleaner at home and people should be looking to do that, to increase the frequency with which they clean these common touch surfaces, you know, the common, especially if you're living in a, in a group in, uh, you know, uh, a shared accommodation, number of students in the same house, making sure that together they're figuring out how do you, who's going to, you know, making sure the, wa the shared washrooms, the kitchen, those kind of things are, are clean right, uh, regularly. So it, again, I'll, I'll end there, but it's that package of all what's required as well as what's recommended. And if we, we don't have a vaccine yet, uh, we don't have an active, you know, uh, an active treatment against COVID-19. What we do have to prevent the spread are all this package of public health measures that I've just described. And if we all do those well, that is what that, that that's that's critically important to minimizing the chance for COVID-19 uh, spread. Absolutely. Thanks so much for going through all of those. Shifting a little bit towards the actual return to campus, some of our post-secondary students in Nova Scotia are experiencing like St. FX or like a K to K. How can students who are returning to an in-person campus this fall for a hybrid not actually stay safe in their classes or in residence or just broadly in their towns or cities? So I think it's everything what I just talked about. I mean, those are the two I mean the and 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 I'm forgetting about what's legally required versus what's recommended. But starting with those things that if I'm not feeling well, stay home or go home. Uh, making sure I'm keeping distance as much as I can. If I'm in an indoor environment, uh, I'm wearing a mask. And it's important that a mask doesn't replace the need to stay physically distanced if at all possible. It complements and, and, and both those measures together strengthen each other. Um, it's uh, uh, hopefully universities have lots of opportunities, they, you know, people washing their hands. So before people go into a 
building or as soon as they get into a building, one of the things they should be looking for is, or, or look for the water, to sanitize their hands or, you know, carry hand sanitizer with them. With them. Because as they go into the building, inevitably they're going to be touching things. And I always talk about, you know, how clean are the hands that are touching. So every time you go into a, 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 a building for a, a class or whatever, washing your hands. And then if you're in there for a, period, a long period of time, washing your hands frequently. Uh, but, you know, coughing into your sleeve. Trying to maintain, I know the universal, like, you know, maintain as much distance as possible if you're sitting in electrical. Uh, if you're sitting at the library or another area study, keeping as, as best you can at, at least that six foot distance. The other thing that's really important about this is, uh, and I t is about how to socialize safely. I, I fully recognize that you know social, all the social life, life outside the classroom, is 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 is, is, is a critically important part of uh, of a university experience. Uh, humans are all social. We need to socialize with, with, with each other. Um, but COVID requires us to socialize safely. So um, the, the, the World Health Organization has come up with a kind of a little list of, they call it their three C's about where are, there, where are the places that, especially the social environments that carry a significantly increased risk of being exposed to COVID-19 or if you are the one who's sick transmitting it uh, to others. So they start with crowded environments. So that's why we're saying try to limit your close social contacts at any given time to a small group of 10. So if you go to an environment like a, a bar or a nightclub, uh, you know, they're supposed to follow rules, they're always doing that. And there's several hundred people there, uh, then, you know, th th there's a much, much greater risk of being exposed. So avoiding crowded areas, especially crowded indoor environments. And the, the second C is, is closed in terms of having poor air circulation. Uh, we know that, uh, that uh, good ventilation uh, helps move uh, the virus around. And if it is in the air, you know, uh, helps uh, you know, uh, protect people from being exposed, uh, as opposed to if the virus is just hanging around in the air for a period of time with people in close contact. Crowded environment, closed environment, um, and the and the third C uh, uh, is 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 close in terms of close contact. Uh, even if you're with two or three other people, that if one of them is sick, the closer the contact you have between people, so getting um, within that six foot distance, especially if it's the longer it is, the more riskier it is. So. Uh, if you're walking past somebody in the hallway and you're and you, you kind of brush shoulders, that's not really a risk. If you stand and talk to somebody face to face for more than 15 minutes, you're increasing your risk. If you're sitting at a table with people and you're over a meal and you're there for a couple of hours, now that's even greater risk. So crowded environments, close in terms of lack of air, indoors and lack of air circulation, and then very close contact. So people remember those three C's about how socializing safely and try to avoid those those three C's in terms of what are really risky environments. All those together is 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 how we're going to keep each other safe. And I think it's important that they recognize that COVID nineteen call uh, really asks all of us to think more about each other. So you may think you're not at risk, and you may say, "Well, what's the big deal if I get COVID?" We know about. We know that younger people are less likely to get severe disease, but the reality is, is that it, 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 we are there are young people who have gotten very sick and some have died. So it it is uh, uh, can be a severe disease for basically any age group, but the risks of it being more severe increase as you get older. Uh, and one of the ways we protect those in our in, in our community who are more vulnerable, whether it's an underlying health condition or somebody who's older is by all of us doing the things I've just been talking about to keep each other safe. So this is really COVID, I, and I like to think about as a, as a way to remind us about uh, how do we create a society that's more caring for each other and looking after each other. So yeah, if you think yeah. about it in that way, maybe it's a positive rather than I have to do all these things. But it's I, the way I can show I care about you and other people around around me is how I, the things that I'm gonna practice and what, I gotta, what I'm gonna expect you to do uh, as well. 
the other piece of that is that we don't know. And there's many people, even young people with chronic medical conditions nowadays that we really don't know. And so we don't know in our group who may be at increased risk. So again, it's not just about age, it's about medical conditions. We all have a responsibility to keep these safe. Absolutely. And like you mentioned, the socializing at the university, making friends is the best part of the post secondary experience. So we just have to make sure we're doing that in a safe manner. Another question I get from students a lot is about, am I going to have a graduation? Am I going to have a celebration for the class of COVID as they're calling themselves? And that really depends on what happens in the world as it keeps shifting every day. So I'm wondering if you could walk us through your opinion or your thoughts on the possibility of a second wave and what post-secondary might look like in January. Yeah, so that's, it is somewhat hard to predict um, uh, and certainly in January or even next spring. Uh, but so what I, you know, and we don't know, you know, where, where, where or when we might get a vaccine, how effective that vaccine, I don't think that's going to be likely for the, within the next year or more. Um, so I keep coming back to, uh, we don't know for sure we're going to get a, a second wave and you know, some, some vi respiratory viruses, you know, but that uh, like uh, influenza, which is similar to COVID uh, in many ways, they have a seasonal nature to them that they come during the winter and then they and they, then they disappear when it's warmer. We don't know yet really whether COVID is just gonna have this natural seasonal nature to it. Um, so, you know, the next few months are gonna be really important. But what we do know is that, you know, you know what will uh, uh, increase the spread of COVID and what is happening uh, in other countries and even in other parts of uh, Canada right now, our larger provinces, is that when people have, uh, started to become complacent and relax on the, all the personal preventive measures that we've, that we've just talked about, that gives COVID an opportunity to really start to spread. And once it's in our communities, it becomes much harder to control its spread. So it's much easier if, we, if we're diligent uh, from a preventive measure and doing everything to minimize uh, the spread, even if it gets here. Um, so I think that's that. So I think that's what we should be focusing on. And and if we want to do things to control the uh, or decrease as much as possible the likelihood of a occurrence, or if you want to call it a second wave in the coming months, then all of us have our. How do we together take that collective runs responsibility? Uh, and I keep saying to people that we if we want to keep our universities and our public schools open. We have to keep our communities really safe and students and what they do outside of their classrooms are part of the broader community. So they, they're part of the community that needs to work together uh, uh, to keep e even your university uh, learning experiences. Absolutely, it's definitely a community effort to keep everyone safe. Thank you so much for this today. Is there anything else you want post-secondary students to know going into the semester? So I think, you know, uh, what I would, let me talk a little bit about information because there's a lot of misinformation out there and social media and there's all sorts of conspiracy theories and, you know, the, all the political environment in the U.S. that so you can get consumed and get lost into inaccurate information. So what I would encourage students to do is there's good, inform them, there's good information on, uh, on, on university websites. In Nova Scotia on the government, if you just Google coronavirus Nova Scotia, you'll come up with our, our coronavirus website and there's lots of good information there. And then we have links to other credible organizations like Public Agency of Canada. Uh, and we continue to look and uh, make sure we have updated and current information on the virus and also what are the requirements, uh, the rules and the recommendations that, that I just talked about. So, uh, Keeping yourself informed is an important part of keeping yourself uh, safe. But, uh, um, I know it's going to be a, a different year and, and perhaps a, a difficult year, year for some, uh, but I do want to uh, you know, thank the, 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 the university students for the work they've done already. And certainly the work I've done in the summer with, with the universities has the, uni the voice of, uni of students has been a critically important. Um, uh, and um, so we recognize the, the importance of having students here, whether they're from Nova Scotia or somewhere else. Um, and then how do we all work together to, uh, to keep each other uh, as safe as possible 
which will allow us to uh, have the minimal restrictions uh, or COVID related restrictions as we move through the coming weeks. Absolutely. And for all students, make sure to keep checking the Government of Nova Scotia website as well as our SMUSA and Students Nova Scotia social medias for all of that information. Thank you so much.